So I found over the years that the reason that people don't achieve financial freedom is actually quite simple. They simply just don't know how to define it. In this video, we're going to learn exactly how to define financial freedom and exactly how not to so that we can be able to achieve financial freedom. So the reason that I started this channel is to help you, equip you with all of the skills, information and knowledge that you need to achieve your financial freedom. So if this is the type of subject matter that you would like to learn a bit more about, click on the subscribe button, push the notification bell so you can be the first to know every time a new video comes out. What financial freedom is not, the truth about achieving financial freedom. Hello and welcome to the first installment of my Achieve True Financial Freedom series. The topic we're discussing today has been one of my biggest peeves for quite a while now. Knowing what I know today, I don't think it's a coincidence that financial freedom is something that so many people talk about, yet so few of us actually achieve. Of course nobody would achieve it if they didn't even know how to properly define it. But what about those who are achieving it? What about them? Well, in this group, that is, those who have achieved it, I've observed two main types. The first type are those who live super frugally and achieve early retirement, being able to retire living a super frugal lifestyle. The second group are those who have an income source that can take care of their day-to-day -day and month-to-month -month expenses. While many people have achieved financial freedom through this very broad definition, this is technically not true for them. I'm hoping to convince you today that these people have not actually achieved financial freedom. So, let's talk about both these groups for a minute. First up we have the super safe and yes, even the fire movement. I know I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers with this one, but here goes. I'm sorry. But you're gonna have to forgive me for not drinking the Kool-Aid when it comes to this particular one. In my mind, there is absolutely no way you can use the word freedom to describe not doing stuff. And when it comes to the super saver movement and also the fire movement, not spending is not akin to freedom. I'm sorry. Spending half of your day tracking your costs and even recording them, cycling, as in not driving, to work, waiting for food to be marked down before you buy it, as in not buying your food at full price, buying your furniture and appliances from thrift stores, as in not getting the furniture that you like, not paying full price for the furniture that you own, cutting and trimming your children's hair, as in not being able to go to the barber or the hairdresser, unplugging all of your appliances when they're not in use, not allowing them to be on standby, as in not enjoying convenience and technology so you can save a little on electricity, and generally cutting costs across all aspects of your life. I generally value the gift of time and being able to spend it with friends, loved ones and family. But I cannot help but notice how much time, energy and mental power is spent trying to go about achieving financial freedom in this way. Also, does this picture look like the embodiment of freedom to you? It certainly doesn't to me. At best, achieving this financial goal through these types of means can best be characterized as financial independence, but definitely not freedom. Saving money is important, but dot, dot, dot. Don't get me wrong, saving is hugely important and I would be remiss to not make it abundantly clear that we can learn a lot from the fire movement and the super savers about how to go about saving money. I do however feel that in taking this type of approach, saving becomes the end and not the means to an end. My thoughts are that your time, your effort, your mental power could better be used learning how to make more money and how to make your savings work for you. But if you want to know more about that, just make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel because I talk about that here a lot. A side note, so for those of you who are not familiar with the movement, the FIRE movement stands for um, financial independence, retire early. Uh, just to catch you up. And yes, the members of the FIRE movement don't really call themselves financially free. I'll give them that. But the ethos of them and the super savers is pretty much the same, really. 
and that's why for the purposes of this video I've lumped them together into the same category. We do however have quite a bit to learn from this group because they have achieved something that most of us have not and probably will not achieve. Where I disagree though is that the level that they have achieved can be called financial freedom. It's not. At best, it's financial independence. You'd be really, really hard pressed to convince me that these people are what one would call free. The problem for me with this way of thinking is that it elevates to the highest level getting a job. Why do I say so? This method is all about save, save, save. Which means that you ultimately have to be beholden to a job to come into your life and make all this save, save, save action possible for you. Thus, your job, because someone else will determine if you get hired, and if so, how much you get paid, will determine how long it takes for you to achieve your goal. So ultimately, if you take this route, your whole plan is contingent on two factors that are really not in your control. The part of these two groups that I consider to be truly financial free are those who have an income source. This group has an income source, perhaps even several, not just savings, and use this to live off. The tricky part may be defining the type of income that they live off, but I have a whole video that talks about different types of income sources and how they can be categorized and defined, so check that out on my channel. A lot of the members of the Super Saver and Fire movement may have to take up a job every now and then so they can pour into their saving that they quite evidently wholly live off. The size of your income stream does not really matter as long as you get to a point where you can basically, from this income stream, maintain your month to month or day to day expenses. The most important state that you need to achieve once you've reached this level is to be mentally free. Once you're mentally free, if you find that you actually want to live off a little more income than you actually got currently coming your way, you can actually have time and patience to be able to think of ways that you can go about increasing your income or increasing the amount of income streams that you have. Another idea that you need to disabuse yourself is the notion that financial freedom is sipping cocktails day after day, month after month on some exotic island somewhere. Trust me, that can only be exciting for so long. Human beings, much more so in this day and age, want to live for a purpose, want their life to have meaning. Thus, in this sense, early retirement is grossly impractical and fallacious for most of us. So, in this way, financial freedom is really not having to work or being able to follow your passions even if it does not make you money. The biggest disadvantage with super saving is that it depends on you being able to control how much you spend and controlling this well. The notion that your expenses are something that you will always be able to control is patently fallacious. Furthermore, if this is your methodology, you cannot even control your income from which you live off, but also from which you derive all your savings. Like we've seen during the time of the global sickness, many, many companies have had to half the salaries, sometimes even more, of their employees just to be able to keep them employed. We've also seen prices of certain goods dramatically increased due to a sudden and sharp increase in demand. These are the type of situations that you simply cannot out budget. And this would just be on the macro scale. So what about the micro scale? So, what would happen if your spouse's health were to change quite dramatically? Also, it would stand to reason that since you've retired early, that your children are still younger and they're still financially dependent on you. What would happen if their financial needs were to change dramatically? What if one of your children were presented with the once in a lifetime opportunity that this needed you to invest a little bit of capital into it? What would you do then? Would you be forced to go out into the market and get a job? Would you rather your child forego this great opportunity? Did you notice that in all these scenarios, I didn't even mention so much as a dollar amount or even the picture of opulence. All that you really need to achieve financial freedom is a wealth of time, a free mind, being in a position where you simply have options, being in a position where you can spend two, three, four hours learning how to play or even just practicing and maintaining your skill on your guitar even though you don't belong to a band, even though you're not getting to play at a gig anytime soon, even though you can't even charge money to watch people or to have people watch you play the guitar. Being able to cook for your family daily, even though you know it takes you forever to do simply because you find it therapeutic and simply because that's 
love that you want to just bestow upon your family every single day. Being able to take a three mile walk every day simply because you want to be healthy. Being able to take an art class and developing your skills as a sketcher, painter, sculptor, with no intention of ever wanting to produce anything that you actually want to sell. Not ever having to exchange your time. Living life on a value basis, not a cost basis. Living your life seeking the fulfillment of potential, not the fulfillment of obligations and responsibility. This to me is financial freedom. Living in a modest apartment, but being able to take your daughter to Juilliard, one of the best dance schools in the world, to pursue her passion, ballet. All the while being available to attend every dance recital, every performance, every international trip, every competition, simply because this is what you want to do. This to me is financial freedom, even if you live in a modest apartment. And the greatest thing about successfully being able to create a perpetual source of income is that you can do it again. I mean, clearly, if you've done it before, you obviously have the experience. In this way, if your income requirements should change, you're able to just find a way to increase your income instead of having to get a job or drastically decrease your expenses. Your mind is free. You think in terms of potential for growth, not just preservation. Your world is one of opportunity, not obligation. You are financially and mentally free. Do you want to achieve this? I certainly hope so, and I certainly do. Next up in my Achieve True Financial Freedom series is financial freedom and your time. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. It will help me know that the content that I'm putting out there is helping someone somewhere, adding value, helping someone to achieve financial freedom. Also, please subscribe to the channel so that you can be the first to know every time I put out new content. Goodbye for now, and don't forget to check out the next installment of the Achieve True Financial Freedom series. Have a good one and be blessed. So I've been running my financial planning practice for about eight years now. So I've been thoroughly exposed to all the methods that work and all the methods that don't work. And as an extension of this YouTube channel, I've also now started to consult one-on-one, -on -one, helping you with wealth coaching. We talk everything from credit, how to speak to your banks, buying cars, property investment, everything you need to know so that you can achieve financial freedom successfully. If you want to get in touch and schedule a consultation, contact me via the email provided.